Hello and welcome back to another great day of Bible study. And we're going to look again at King David. But this time King David, because he's king now, makes a mistake. You see... He goes and he goes to Jerusalem. Now, it's ruled by other people right now for whatever reason. And so he goes and he's going to take his army. He's going to go conquer Jerusalem. And the people that live there say, Psh, our city is so fortified. And we got some big walls that even blind people could defend this place. So you don't have a shot. So you know what David does? He conquers the city. And he really likes Jerusalem. And he likes it so much they call it the city of David. I mean, he loves Jerusalem. And he talks to the king of Tyre and he gets a bunch of supplies to build up the walls of Jerusalem. And he makes it this great place. He makes a palace. He does all these other things. And then he says, I want the Ark of the Covenant to come here. Well, the Ark of the Covenant is somewhere else. So he says, we're going to go get it. And they go get the Ark of the Covenant, and they put it on a cart, and it, they put have animals like oxen that are going to pull the Ark of the Covenant, and then they're going to bring it home. And they're all excited, and they're jumping around, they're playing all these instruments, and they're having so much fun. And then it comes to this place, and it loses its balance, and it falls over. And so the Ark of the Covenant, a man named Isaiah, catches it. And you know what happens? It says the anger of the Lord burns against Isaiah, and Isaiah is struck down dead immediately. And then it says David's angry at God. And David is not happy, and God is not happy, because no matter where David's heart was, and the entire people, everybody's heart was in the right place, but they didn't transport the Ark of the Covenant in the right way. You see, there's supposed to be a, a skins or a curtain or a covering over the ark. It's supposed to be a solemn occasion where there is no really big party around it. Oh, and then it's supposed to be carried by Levites, not put on a cart driven by animals. So everything that they did pretty much was wrong, even though their heart was in the right place. This is a tough lesson to learn. Well, David goes back and they, they park the Ark of the Covenant where it kind of tipped over. And then later he goes and he says, I want it back in my place. He wants it in the city. He says, how can I have the Ark of the Covenant in my place? See, he loves God so much. His heart is in the right place. And he wants it close by so he can, can be in constant worship of God. Well... They go back and they learn it needs to be carried by the Levites. So they carry it back. And after the first six steps, he he worships and they do a sacrifice to God. And then it comes into the town and he is so excited and so happy. It says he's in his ephod and he's dancing in the streets. And his wife, Michal, Saul's daughter, is pretty upset with David. He's, she says, why are you doing that? In front of all the slave girls, it's pretty vulgar, is what she says. Okay, time out. What's an ephod? Well, from what I understand, David is literally out in the streets dancing in his underpants. He's like Captain David underpants. And, and it's just crazy. He's out there just having a ball and he's worshiping. And he says, I am not in front of these slave girls. I am worshiping God. So now... David is at least doing part of the things he needs to do to make sure the Ark of the Covenant is right, but his heart is definitely fully in the right place. You see, this is a hard story because Isaiah saves the Ark of the Covenant and he's punished for it. David is bringing the Ark home and he's kind of punished for it. You see, God cares about our hearts. And he wants our hearts in the right place. And we see that over and over and over again 
but it doesn't stop there. God wants us to understand and know how to worship him because God doesn't put rules out there to keep his thumb on us. God puts the rules out there so that we can be better, so that we can prosper and we can do great things. See, the rules of God are there to protect us, not to hurt us. And David forgets this. See, David's heart is in the right place. Everybody's heart's in the wrong place, and yet they messed up. And they still did wrong. It's the same way with us. We have to make sure our hearts are in the right place. And we have to make sure we do the things in the right way. Finally, David is able to worship out in the streets. Can you imagine running downtown Hutchinson, Kansas, or Wichita, Kansas, or New York City, in your underpants, worshiping God? And not caring. See, there's something called self-consciousness. And that's when you worry more about how people look at you and how you're looking at you than what really matters. And see, David doesn't have any ounce of self-consciousness to run out in the city in his underwear worshiping God. And we, maybe not in our underwear, we should have that same attitude worshiping God. It doesn't matter about the people around us. We're going to worship God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength no matter what. So you need to remember three things because we're not going to do a flip book or anything like that this, this time. But you need to remember three things from the story. Worship with your heart and then and, and make sure your heart is in the right place. Number two, that's not it. You need to make sure you're doing things right. You need to make sure you're doing the right things in the right way with all of your heart. And finally, when it comes to worshiping God, don't worry about other people. You're worshiping God. It doesn't matter what other people think. It matters that you're worshiping the Father. You guys are amazing. Remember, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock right here, 2500 North Plum at Hutchinson, Kansas. You have an amazing Bible class, so be here. I want that, that class packed full. Remember, wear your masks, and you're going to keep six feet away, so you're going to be safe from all the sicknesses, and you're going to be able to worship God. Not in your underwear. We don't want you in your underwear. I mean, King David's amazing, but uh, do you want to see me in my underwear? I don't think so. I don't want to see you in your underwears. So be fully clothed, okay? And worship in the right place, in the right way, in the right mind. Also, remember, if you liked it, like it. Comment down below. Tell me what you learned. Tell me what other questions you might have. And tell me who you're going to share this video with. You guys are amazing. We'll see you next time. Until then, obey your parents. Bye-bye.